Hello everybody, since I got the request several times from you guys to know how to split ski, you know, I didn't think about the subject, but I think it is a great idea. So split skiing is a big part of split boarding. And today we're gonna see all these little techniques to make all your transitions between two uphills nice, safe and efficient so that you're gonna save time and energy into your split boarding. There are two main scenarios where you're gonna make sense and it's gonna save you time to just stay in ski mode. So the first one is the most obvious one. It's in between uh, two big uphills. You're gonna have a little downhill and it doesn't really make sense to change into snowboard mode, lose that time and then change again for the uphill. So you're gonna stay in splitboard mode and just ski down and save time and carry on with your tour. The other case scenario is also for long flat sections. So for example, long trails or maybe a long glacier before or after a run. Uh, you know, even if you're in snowboard mode, sometimes it's really worth changing into ski mode and just push along that flat because you're gonna save a lot of energy rather than being twisted on snowboard mode. So rule number one with your gear when you're split skiing is to put your high backs back into riding mode. Super important, you need that angle to support you from falling onto your back seat. It's gonna be important to have your boots and bindings really tight, because you're gonna have a good support that way and you're gonna be a lot less likely to fall. Up, up. Back. The question with split ski is, do we keep the skins or not? So if it's a really short downhill and you've got enough angle to carry speed even with the skins, I would recommend sometimes to keep them on. But if it's a longer downhill, just take them off and it's going to feel a lot easier. A little technique to take out your skins without taking out your bindings. So just pull, just take off the hook, up. Make sure you go until you're binding. And then up. And voila. For the lazy ones, for the ones who want to save time, worth practicing. I'm not really good at it. <laughs> up. Skins in the jacket, they stay warm, and I carry on. So I've got them close if I need to. So the biggest problem and the biggest difficulty in split skiing is the fact that you don't have much holding you in the back and especially with a rocker on your tail. So it's super important to keep the weight above your feet and slightly forward. So to do that, you need like the technique is pretty simple. Really stay upright with your upper body, arms in front so that it's going to keep your body and your weight towards the front and legs slightly bent. Choo, choo, choo. If you've never done it and you're scared to try it in the middle of nowhere, I truly recommend to just go on the slopes and have a bit of fun and have a bit of practice. It's actually quite fun to be together and chase each other. One common mistake is to go wide legs. So a lot of snowboarders go wide legs and a bit back seat. So remember, bring the legs together, keep everything tight together your elbows tight next to your body and arms forward. Woohoo! Last but not least, avoid going like these straight legs and upper body forward. That's also a very common mistake. Now it's time to just get out there and practice. The cool thing about split skiing is that there is always some comedy involved. No matter how good you are, you're always gonna get some nice little crashes and your friends are gonna laugh. Soon enough, you're just gonna be out there slaloming through all the muggles and everything and jumping and impressing your friends. So have a great time. I wish you some great adventures into the mountains and be safe.